morning. Buenos días. Bienvenidos. Welcome to Fort Washington Collegiate Church. We are a multicultural, multiracial, open and affirming church in the neighborhood of Washington Heights in the city of New York. We thank you for inviting us to your sacred space this morning. And even though we need to remain apart, it is God's love that is keeping us together. Let us worship God.
Good morning. Please join me responsibly in our call to worship. We gather to respond to the call of God's love. Thankful that someone cared enough to share this good news with us. May we be compassionate enough to share this divine presence with others. Love, when shared, is not divided, but multiplied. Love given away is not diminished, but expanded. May our gathering welcome those near and far to know the love of this divine presence.
Good morning for Washington Collegiate Church. At this time, we take a moment to share God's peace with one another. Right now, you can text a friend and let them know you're thinking about them. Share this video on Facebook, like and subscribe on YouTube, invite your friends to join us in our worship service today. Let's digitally pass the peace together. May the peace of Christ be with you. Join us for a powerful celebration of Black History Month. We will welcome back the Reverend John Vaughn, former member of FWCC and current executive minister of the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church, as well as feature the queer black men's choir from our friends at Middle Collegiate Church. Afterward, join us for a talkback session with Reverend Vaughn and a special concert. Mark your calendar for the beginning of Lent, Join us for our Ash Wednesday worship service, live on Zoom, streaming to Facebook and YouTube, Wednesday, February 17th. Become a member of this thriving faith community, even if we are distant. You can reach out to Rev. Michael Vanacore at mvanacore at fortwashingtonchurch.org to learn more about becoming a member. Wednesdays during Lent. Join us for a special God Talk series led by our very own Jay Godfrey, entitled, Who Can We Be Together? A Biblical Exploration of Luke 13. Jay Godfrey is a beloved member of FWCC who specializes in the creation of religious education curricula dedicated to the connection between faith and justice. You won't want to miss it. This series begins on Wednesday, February 24th and ends on Wednesday, March 31st. You already know what it is. We have masks. You should buy them. Love period and hashtag love on the move available now on our website, fortwashingtonchurch.org. Good morning, Fort Fam. Today, we're going to hear about Jesus doing a whole lot of good stuff for a whole lot of people. Well, I want to shout out the people right here in our city who are doing a whole lot of good for a whole lot of people right now. This week, I was fortunate enough to get the first dose of the COVID vaccine, and you would not believe how many people it takes to get the whole operation not only running smoothly, but making sure everyone's okay. Well, here in today's Bible story about Jesus healing pretty much the whole city, and it looks to me like that's what these volunteer nurses, technicians, and helpers are doing. It's always really cool to see Jesus and working in other people, especially those who help to heal. But... A vaccine is a little bit different from a cure. Vaccines help stop you getting sick, but they don't really make you feel better. In fact, my arm kind of hurts. I think if Jesus was around today, he'd still be giving out vaccines, but also going to every hospital and homeless shelter, making sure everyone is cared for. Because that's what really makes us feel better, love and care. So can you think of someone in your life who makes you feel better? And how can you use love and care to make other people feel better too? Think about those questions for a few minutes, talk with your family about it, and head on over to our CYM page when the service is over. See you there. Now for a reading from Mark chapter one, verses 29 to 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now, Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came in and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many deep demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. 
In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went through Galilee, proclaiming the message in the synagogues and casting out demons. Good morning, friends. It is my privilege and a blessing to be bringing you the message this morning. At the same time, I'm only really here because Reverend Damaris this past week was feeling a little unwell. It's nothing serious and nothing to be worried about, but it was enough that she asked me if I could uh, step in and carry the sermon today. So please, as we continue our service, keep Reverend Damaris in her prayer, in your prayers. O oh God, and now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. My sermon title this morning, the title of my brief meditation, is The Weight We Can Carry for Jesus. In our gospel text for this morning, we see Jesus dive headlong into the central calling of his ministry, the ministry of healing. And right from the beginning of this ministry, of Jesus' ministry, we see him grapple with this tension between the weight of the need that rises around him and his limited ability to meet that need. And as we observe this struggle this morning, I would ask us all to reflect. What is the weight that Jesus is carrying and how might we carry some of that weight with him? Our scripture passage then picks up right where last Sunday's left off. As soon as Jesus leaves the synagogue at Capernaum, he goes directly to the house of Simon and Andrew, together with the other disciples he just recently called, James and John. Immediately, they tell him that Simon's mother-in-law is laying in a bed with a fever. Jesus goes to her, takes her hand, lifts her up, and at once her fever is cured. It is crucial to note here that this is only the second real act of ministry that Jesus performs, the first being the one we saw last week with Jesus uh, casting out the unclean spirit from the man in the temple. And it is important to notice who in this text Jesus prioritizes as he begins his ministry of healing. Professor Osvaldo Vena, whom I quoted also last week in my sermon, makes this key observation. The fact that the first person to be healed in this story is a woman is significant. It shows that from the very beginning, Jesus sided with the least of society. Because then, even more than it is now, women were a very oppressed class of society. Jesus' healing, then, is a vehicle for the creation of what liberation theologians call the preferential option for the poor. On this, the very first Sunday that we celebrate Black History Month, we have seen very recently how we betray that preferential option. According to the New York Post, white New Yorkers who have received the, corona vaccine, the coronavirus vaccine outnumber Asian and Latinx recipients by more than 3 to 1 and black recipients by more than 4 to 1. We have seen that disparity on arrogant display right here in Washington Heights as the authorities have allowed white affluent residents from the suburbs to gobble up almost all of the vaccines that should by all rights have gone first to the black, brown, and working class residents of Upper Manhattan and the Bronx. For our leaders to celebrate the amazing contributions of black individuals and communities throughout the history of our country while allowing this systemic discrimination to go forward is the epitome of hypocrisy and evil. Returning to our text, after Jesus heals Simon's mother-in-law in her house, throughout the day that follows, the word spreads far and wide, and by the evening, the whole city has gathered around Jesus' door. He cures many who are sick, 
and convalescing of a plethora of diseases, and he also casts out many demons. Now I want to make two observations here. First, I think this speaks to just how desperately we are all in need of healing, physically, spiritually, mentally, physically, individually, and communally. We are all seeking healing. But second, we can also see from this text how cruel and unjust society was in those days, as it is today, in that it would fail so abysmally in meeting the basic needs of the majority of its inhabitants. You wouldn't see hundreds, if not thousands, gathering around Jesus' door if those people first had had access to a doctor and healing in their homes or in their home communities to begin with. It reminds me of the stories you see of, of, of places like Massachusetts where they'll open up a free dental clinic or a Florida where they'll open up a free healthcare clinic in a tent somewhere in a field or a parking lot and you'll see lines of people stretching out waiting overnight, hundreds and thousands of people because they don't have dental care or health care. Our scripture goes on to recount how Jesus was so overwhelmed with the work of healing that day. That in the morning that followed, while it was still dark, he got up and escaped away to a deserted place to pray. I am touched by this moment and others particularly found in the Gospel of Mark, where we encounter not so much Jesus' power, but rather his weakness. Yes, we affirm Jesus is fully God, fully divine, but he is also fully human. And in, recon and in his own recognition of his limitations, he reminds us of ours. And so after his disciples have searched, out, searched him out in his place of prayer, Jesus decides that the time has come for them to move on. Let us go, he says, on to the neighboring town so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. I can imagine, and I invite you to imagine with me, the heavy heart and troubled mind that must have afflicted Jesus as he took this decision, as he took leave of this suffering community. And at the same time, I think that he understood that the people's suffering extended far beyond that one place, and he knew he had set out to seek a healing that would be more universal. And that, friends, is where we come in. Our job as Christians interpreting the message of Jesus in the light of our present day is not to look at the weight that Jesus is carrying and to weep with him because it is just too much for one man to bear. Rather, it is to join our hands and take up his load with him. It is not to become overwhelmed by the conditions that cause so much suffering and death around us, but rather to decide that once and for all those conditions must be eliminated. That is what the great priest Camilo Torres Restrepo meant when he said efficacious love. I see this contradiction at the heart of the healthcare debate in this country. It is a widely accepted fact that our healthcare system is beyond repair in this country. 15 million Americans have lost their employer provided health insurance since the start of this pandemic. Meanwhile, COVID 19 continues to ravage individuals and communities, predominantly Black, Latinx, Indigenous, and working class people across our country. The clearest simplest and most racially just solution is a government-run universal program that guarantees health care to all as a human right. Medicare for all is, in my opinion, the Christian solution to the health care problem in this country. 88% of Democrats and a majority of Americans also support this vision. And yet, we cannot even get the leaders of the Democratic Party to get on board. So how does this relate to our scripture lesson this morning? 
It relates directly because in this lesson, Jesus reveals at once his burning desire to heal the sick and at the same time his inability to meet this crucial need for everyone. Well, guess what? Whereas Jesus and his disciples may not have been able to do it alone, together, through the collective power of modern administration, governance, and medicine, together we can. This is the weight we can carry for Jesus. No, one man and his band of disciples, they may not be able to achieve health care and healing for all. But that is why we come together and form governance to do the things that, that individually we cannot achieve alone. To do the things together that individually we cannot achieve alone. And if you are asking me, if you're asking me, if Jesus was willing to go to the cross so that all who believeth in him may not perish but have life in abundance, then we had better get it done. In the name of the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
friends, this morning in this new year, wherever you are, that now becomes a sacred space. Your table becomes God's table. So let us be ready with crackers or bread or cereal or juice or water or tea or coffee. Those are the elements of the sacrament this morning. Here at this table, there at your table, let the divine spark enter our lives. Let the holy light aid us in seeing Christ in our midst. The brightness of Jesus the Christ will illuminate our way. The radiance of Christ will warm our hearts. God is shining upon you. And God's light streams upon you. Open your hearts. We open them to the brilliance of God. Let us give thanks for the love and life of Christ. We praise our Creator with joy and thanksgiving. Friends, we are in our respective places, eager to experience the presence of Christ. Notice the Christ in the cries of your neighborhood children. Spot the Christ in your neighbor singing. The Christ is gleaming where you are, summoning us to share love and light. As we go about our daily life, share peace and loving kindness upon the earth. Holy Spirit, may your divine glow bless this bread and cup, warm our hearts made cold by a chilled world. May this meal inspire us to carry your warmth into the world. And so on the night before Jesus died, when some were plotting to extinguish the holy light, Warmth was shared between friends. Jesus took bread. In his blessing, he passed the divine glow to his followers. He broke the bread. He reminded them to eat it in remembrance of him. Let us eat the bread. Later that same evening, Jesus took the cup. He blessed it and invited his friends to taste from the cup of grace, saying, Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us drink the cup. Loving God, thank you for refreshing us at your table, for walking with us on our journey, for reminding us that you have called us and that we are yours. Be with us as we continue to look forward, as we look to you for guidance, as we depend on your spirit for strength. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us gather our minds and hearts in prayer. At this time, we ask that you share your public prayer requests in the chat or comments section, using only the first names to protect the privacy of those we pray for. Let us pray. Loving God, this morning we gather together as a community. We pray for those affected by this pandemic, for those of us who have lost loved ones, for those of us who could not be with our family and friends in the hospital and in hospice care. Heal our hearts and may your spirit give us strength and guide us to healing and stability in the midst of so much chaos. We pray for all of those who are alone and isolated. We pray that everyone feels the warm embrace of a loving community. We pray this as we remember the words that Jesus taught us. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now is the time in our service when we have a chance to give back. I'm Caleb, 
and I'm the co-coordinator of the Social Justice Task Force at Fort Washington Collegiate Church. And I am Carl, the secretary of the Social Justice Task Force. In the social justice team, we've been working hard to establish a community fridge here at Fort Washington Collegiate Church. This project is important to me because food insecurity is an issue affecting people of the Fort Washington community, and it's an issue that can be solved for the people by the people. But we cannot do it without your help. Please go to fortwashingtonchurch.org slash give and select Community Fridge to donate today. You can also email Reverend Michael at mvanacor at fortwashingtonchurch.org to sign up to volunteer. If we come together as a church and as a community, we can make this fridge happen. Thank you for your support and solidarity. Your morning offering will now be received. forth beloved 
carry your burden, broken and weary souls and bodies to Jesus and receive on this glorious morning healing, the healing that God alone can provide. And together, let us join hands and get about the work of healing this broken world. Let us go in peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. Gracias por estar con nosotros. As you begin a new week, remember to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Go in peace. Vayamos en paz.